Hey YouTube, back with another first impressions of the Warbond and Patch. We're going to start off with the Warbond here. Uh, gotta say, love the theming for this Warbond. It was uh, definitely an exciting trailer to watch, especially with them teasing that new planet biome. The new uh, forest uh, bayou kind of like swamp. Looks great. I can't wait to play on it. Maybe Cyberstan, because they've been doing some terraforming. Uh, love the theming. Uh, this feels like more of a cosmetic war bond rather than previous war bonds, which were more gameplay oriented. Obviously, they had cosmetics in them, but it definitely feels like it's more of like going for like skins and like obviously they like new emotes. And these new skins are just, they're awesome. I, I love them. Uh, there's definitely some debate on whether or not the armor passive is 100% working. Uh, I've been seeing that on Reddit and from like my anecdotal, just kind of like using it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually working properly or working on all weapons. Uh, definitely there's some weapons where I'm like, yeah, it, it appears like it is working. And then I go and use the HMG on this, uh, on this map with like, without the perk. And then I go use it with it. And I'm like, I don't see a difference right i'll i'll swipe my camera across the screen and i'm like it takes about the same amount of time i would like to see some proper testing if like a side-by-side -side comparison comes out uh and not just on one weapon my theory is maybe that certain weapons are not applying that like better handling right so hopefully it seems like the melee damage is definitely working i when, when testing the melee against uh teammates <laughs> you can in fact one shot your teammates with the extra melee damage which is pretty funny uh moving on to the carbine uh statistically it is just the normal liberator but with 30 percent more right sorry 50 percent more fire rate going from 600 uh, rounds per minute or so, 700 rounds per minute, all the way up to 920 rounds per minute. Uh, obviously also bumping up the uh, the recoil as well. Uh, not bad, not bad weapon. Uh, unfortunately, I just, in the current state of like the game, you're not really needing a bullet hose for bot missions because devastators need more precision rather than anything else. And you're not really going to bring the carbine for like killing tier one bots. I think there's way better. Like you can even just bring the redeemer secondary, a machine pistol and get a basically the same gameplay as this. Uh, so for bots, I'm kind of like striking it out. Don't recommend it probably. And it, like, I'm going to be doing a new tier list rather soon. And I'm, I'm thinking probably somewhere in like the B minus territory for bots. I would just not recommend it for bugs. It has a better place, but you're going to be running out of ammo extremely fast. Uh, especially when you're comparing it to way more efficient ammo chaff killing weapons like the Incendiary Breaker, which didn't receive a change at all. So it's still by far the best determined chaff killing weapon. Uh, so basically, I think the big change would be like, I don't think they really need to change anything other than probably just giving it more magazines in reserve. I think at the moment, I think it's eight, including the one that you spawn with. So it just, it just were really need some more ammo economy or you know more damage per bullet would never hurt as well so yeah uh going into the bushwhacker love this thing it's extremely fun to use uh the the tri-barrel shot although a little bit of a meme uh is very good for like just quickly turning on a stalker that's pushing you uh each individual shot is essentially the normal punisher like the first weapon you get in the war bond the very first war bond each individual shot same amount of stagger it seems like same amount of damage by stats uh it's quite good i do like using it for bugs it's very fun i don't think it's as good as like the redeemer or not as specialized as the senator as far as having medium pen but i do like taking it and it's kind of like a nice backup because uh, like typically i'm running out of ammo and I need something for that kind of close to like somewhat mid range. And this thing has that respectable range, just like the Punisher. Uh, I've been enjoying it, fast reload speed, and you can fan the hammer with it. So you don't have to use it in try shot. You could just kind of spam click and get a lot of damage down range really fast. So really fun. Uh, probably gonna end up being somewhere in the A tier. I'm not sure exactly where yet. We'll be working on the tier list a little bit later. Uh, obviously, we have the two armors that I didn't say yet, but we have the light uh, with the new physique perk. 
up there. Uh, we have the heavy, and then there's a medium set in the Superstore right now. If you want it, you'll have to buy it in-game uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the skins, as I said earlier, are awesome. The, the theme of the War Bond is great. Uh, yeah, nailing it. Now, for one of the big disappointments of the War Bond, I gotta say, even though I was expecting it to be kind of meme worthy, <laughs> the throwing knives, I almost said hammer, the throwing knives um, are definitely lacking in like that, like extra flair and utility. I was hoping you could like pull it out and like use it as a melee weapon. You cannot. I was hoping you could pick them up after throwing them. You cannot. Uh, luckily, you at least get eight, and on a standard resupply, you get eight back. Uh, so that's great. That's awesome. Uh, but the raw damage wise is not fantastic. It's taking two to kill a brood commander's head. Uh, you can one shot a lot of tier one chaff bugs with it but not reliably. You definitely have to go for like a weak point uh, and be very precise, which is not always easy when you're getting, we're talking about these enemies that are moving around a lot. Um, versus bots, you can in fact one shot all the tier one bots, which is, you know, expected. Uh, and you can one shot a devastator, but you have to be brutally accurate, obviously going for the, you know, the front face plate. Uh, unfortunately, being completely accurate with the throwing knife is a little bit difficult because you can't throw them very far before you get a lot of drop. And then the second part is it seems like the cross, like they're offset from your crosshair. I've been noticing that you throw them a little bit to your left. It isn't compensating for the third person camera. So you definitely have to aim a little bit to the right uh, to get it like super dead on. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think if they, if they gave us at least the ability to like pick them up, I wouldn't hate them as much. They're definitely a fun, grenade option but they're not they're not really competing with you know your your impact grenade or your stun grenade that's just not how they work uh so if they just like boost the damage allowed you to pick them up and use them as a melee weapon i'd be like okay i think they they fit well in the game but until then they're more just a you know call of duty cross map throwing knife kind of you know just fun to use uh, the experimental infusion I've been kind of using <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's very fun. I'm a stim addict. If you ever watch me on stream, I'm constantly using medic armor. And it does seem like you do get the additional two seconds. I, I don't have like proper evidence of that, but it does seem like you get the two from just like counting. Um, but regardless, having the extra stims so you can kind of just spam it is uh, rather useful. It seems that you get around 10 to 15% more movement speed. Uh, and the dam damage re reduction, I haven't seen any like side by side comparisons yet, but it is substantial enough that you know I, I don't feel invincible, but uh, I'm definitely tanking a lot more damage than I usually would tank while my you know health is regenerating and then for a short time afterwards. Uh, it, I like it, it's fun. Uh, the, the effect on the screen is a little obnoxious at first, but you kind of get used to it and you kind of are okay with it over time. I'm sure maybe some people might not feel like that, but who knows. All right, that's my thoughts on the War Bond. We're now going to move into the patch itself. All right, now in for the patch. Uh, I got to say, it's been a fantastic one. Uh, it's not perfect, and there's definitely some known issues where, like, certain things definitely got changed, which were unintentional or intentional, and there's some bugs along the way. Uh, just going through on what they have on Reddit, but... Uh, the recoilless rifles seem to got a straight bullet. Uh, it, the recoilless animation has been extended by like maybe a second, second and a bit, second and a quarter. Um, it's basically just, it's slower on the first half where you're like pulling it over to the side and opening up the tube. Um, not sure why. Uh, it definitely felt like it was in a really good spot, especially with the reload cancel. Uh, the reload was solid. I, I don't know why they slowed it down personally. Um, not sure. I, I know in a previous patch they increased the speed, and now it seems like they're bringing it back to the way it was. I feel like they should have just left it. I don't know. Maybe that's one of those dev things where like they see it as a bug, but it's not actually a bug. We like it, but who knows? Uh, the passes on armor, we like I was saying earlier in the war bond, we're not quite sure if it is actually working all the time. It doesn't seem to be working. The melee damage seems to be working, but not exactly the handling. So definitely hope that they 
can go uh, back on that. Ballistic Shield has a problem where if you have it on your back and you just go prone, you won't be able to stand up. Basically, just put in your arm like to like equip it, and then you'll be able to stand up again was the best way I heard as the understanding. Uh, there's a crash if you open up the war bond and then exit it, go into your menu, change a setting, it'll crash your game, so just be careful of that. Uh, they recommend either changing settings before you go into the war bond or go into the mission and then change your settings. Kind of stupid, but this is probably something they can hot fix, you know, Monday, Tuesday or something like that. Uh, social menu doesn't work properly. Uh, they did some changes to the social menu and it seems to have like borked it a bit. So, you know, either probably use like your PSN uh, friends list or your Steam mostly to find people. Uh, also, opening your social menu decreases performance for some people. I didn't notice it at all, but yeah. Uh, Spirit packaging broke. That's the one that gives you full resupply. Uh, just be aware that you're not getting full resupply right now. Hopefully they can hot fix that. Uh, sometime in next week and then people are reporting some patrol changes being weird they did change patrols but in that they said that they wanted to add more enemies to the quieter parts of the map to kind of keep more of a baseline of the amount of enemies you deal with and maybe they overdid it as far as when i've been doing bug and bot missions it seems very similar to the way it normally was on bot or bugs but for bots, there definitely seems to be a spike in difficulty. But I believe that's more because you have gunships coming in from all these different directions because they are now patrols. Uh, there's streaker patrols, but they're way less lethal, especially if you take the incinerator breaker. But the gunship troop patrols are extremely lethal and they kind of are everywhere. Uh, they, are, they are very, very, very very hard to deal with if you do not have your support weapon or a primary weapon that can actually deal with them which there aren't that many uh explosive or medium pen weapons if you're wondering uh supply lines are there which is great uh a bunch of stratagem and like weapon and planet changes which is awesome uh getting into the main like stratagem change the rocket entry is great we're going to be talking about it a lot more when we're doing the tier list later but i would highly recommend checking out the century now it feels like a really nice um like shift away from the auto cannon century the auto cannon century more for like up front burst damage and stagger whereas rocket century is more consistent aoe damage really like it machine gun century going down to two minutes great change love it definitely recommend trying it it's like an alternative to the gatling sentry which is more for defensive play whereas the machine gun sentry i push like i throw it off on an off angle and i use it more for like aggression it's really cool uh the durability of turrets is nice i've been seeing some weird reports that people say that like hey the new rocket sentry can survive a full uh uh barrage uh from a uh gunship that's that's not the case that the clips that you people are like people are seeing it in the vast majority of the rockets are just missing. Uh, the rocket sentry does die in a couple rockets still. So you still need to put the rocket sentry pretty far back or protect it to prevent you know your sentry from dying. Uh, I've also heard reports that the EMS mortar sentry is now properly being aggroed. Enemies won't ignore it anymore. So you gotta protect it. The HMG emplacement, super fun change. 100% greater rotation speed, it's good. Definitely try it out. It's fun. Uh, Anti-personnel mines and uh, incendiary mines. Uh, yes, they got more damage, but unintentionally, they seem to be doing a chain explosion more often. If you just shoot one mine, I was noticing quite a bit where it would just pop the other mines in vicinity and just cause a chain explosion. That might be because it does more damage now, or I'm I was told it was doing that before as well, but it, maybe it's doing it more now. Not quite sure. Overlook Gatling has a huge glow up. It's probably the biggest buff in the entire patch. This thing is crazy. It fires twice as many shots. It fires it faster. It has heavy pen and a lower cooldown. <laughs> Highly recommend trying it. It's great for bugs and bots. Probably more of a bug slayer than a bot slayer. Uh, but yeah, really fun. Just watch out if you have orbital scatter on. It kind of reduces its potency just because it won't go where you threw it. But that's great. Or precision, another big glow up. It now goes down to one second if you have the upgrade in your ship. And man, does it fly. 
Uh, <laughs> it's really good for taking out Ball Titans now, or just like bots in general. You don't feel like you need stun grenades to keep the enemy in place in order to utilize it. Really love it. Over to Lair Burst, you're probably just going to use it more. Good change. It's fine. Uh, Eagle 110s is kind of like a weird one where like I really enjoy it because uh, they're way more consistent now, especially for bot missions. But because they reduced the actual damage of them, because they made it more consistent damage in both targeting and the way it does its damage, it feels like they're a little lackluster against like chargers and ball titans. It can take out a charger in one salvo, or, uh, one use, but I didn't find it was happening super often. And then for ball titans, it doesn't always crack open the sides, which is a little disappointing. Uh, so I would love if they could like give it a little bit more damage per use. Eagle strafing run, super fun one. Love that they gave it the extra pen armor penetration. It's really good in use. Uh, it rarely actually one shots a lot of like the higher pen uh, enemies, but for like the chaff and like ball spewers and like brood commanders or devastators and stuff like that, it's really strong. I really love it when you have that like long line of enemies, throw it down like basically at your feet behind you and close air support comes in. It, it definitely starts to feel like an A-10 Warhog is supporting you in the battlefield. Sick. Uh, also really good versus bug holes. Yes, it can kill bug holes. There is an explosive component to it. Yes, it can kill fabricators. You just need to line it up properly and make sure it lands inside the vent. And yes, it can kill shrieker nests and uh, spore blooms. If you line it up properly, it can actually kill more than one spore bloom at, um, sorry, more than one shrieker nest at a time. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Big glow up. Heavy machine gun. Awesome change. Uh, it was already pretty damn good for bot missions, but now it's like a really solid contender. Highly recommend taking it with the supply backpack. Really fun to use. Uh, also take the armor that reduces re recoil. Great combo. Uh, it's only five shots now to kill a Hulk to the eye. And it's around like eight to 10 to kill a dropship if you choose one engine to shoot at. That's great. And it has 75 round magazine. Wish it got more mags or wish it got more like of like an ammo, like a larger magazine, but it is what it is. I think it's uh, it's very potent now for bot missions. Yeah, definitely try it out. Uh, MG43 got a nice change. Basically, it's just more MG43. Uh, not too much more to say about that. Uh, shorter uh, reload and one more magazine. Uh, all of the like assault rifles in general are doing more durable body parts. So that means legs, heads, and stuff like that. Uh, so they will feel more consistent. Uh, for all the people that are wondering, like, is the guard dog good? Like the ballistic one? It's still shit. It still has so many problems. It's 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 still bad. <laughs> uh, the laser guard dog is still superior in almost every single way. Uh, but it is nice that, you know, all the the, uh, the regular assault rifles are getting that uh, nice bump. The adjudicator and the tenderizer now sit, like, right next to each other. If you want the medium pen, you go to the adjudicator. If you want light pen, you go for the tenderizer. Really love that. Change to 95 damage. Uh, tenderizer isn't great versus bugs because it just lacks that like pure like ammo but uh at least it makes up for it for being quite effective as an alternative to the sickle for bot mission i was very much enjoying two tapping devastators in the head right uh it, it is quite fun uh and then the adjudicator if you need that medium pen uh it going up to 30 rounds is good change uh, Purifier is now in the spot it was always intended to be. Uh, it's still not a bug weapon. I think the charge time is still too long to be really effective. It is nice that they gave it the better explosion radius, but I still feel like it needs a little bit more love as far as the charge time. But that being said, because it's more of a long range weapon, uh, it is suited for bot missions. It's like an average of like three to four shots to kill a Devastator, which is not bad when you're stun locking them and you kill multiple Devastators at the same time and stagger multiple of them at the same time because it's very similar to the Possible Punisher where it has a large AoE that staggers. Uh, also, now that it has the proper medium pen, you can take out the turrets of a, uh, or like the Gatling sentries of the Factory Strider. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It's fun. It's just the long range plasma punisher with some medium pen. It's a, it's a really cool weapon. Uh, I definitely give it a try again, especially for bots. Explosive crossbow had another big glow up. It's now the counterpart to the eruptor. 
if you don't feel like using the eruptor and you don't want to use the animation cancel that allows you to fire faster with it you have the crossbow now that can take out fabricators and bug holes uh it's been quite fun um although they didn't give it back the full uh explosion radius i think they wanted to keep the explosive crossbow different from the eruptor where the eruptor is a little bit like slower fire rate if you don't do the animation cancel and it does more damage but in a larger radius whereas the crossbow is a little bit more like single target and a little bit faster fire rate right so you have that difference i think the eruptor overall has the advantage in my eyes especially if you do the animation cancel if you're curious it's opening the strategy window after firing uh if you hold it there for about half a second to a second uh, it will cause you to not need to do the charging of the handle in between shots. So you could fire, you know, upwards of 50% faster. So just heads up on that. It'll most likely get fixed in the future, but if you want to utilize it, go for it. Uh, diligence, the regular diligence is doing some more durable damage. Nice to see. Um, oh my God. I was so happy. I was just, I, I was so ecstatic on stream when I read this. <laughs> Bot. Missions no longer have minus one stratagems. Hallelujah. They definitely need to add in different modifiers to keep it like more like less static because at the moment now it's only ever 50% call in speed uh, increase and cooldown or 25% cooldown. Uh, but hopefully in the future that they can uh, change that. They disabled the personnel defense, the essential personnel defense mission because it's completely busted on bot missions it's fine on bugs but it was completely busted on bots so i think they're just going back to the drawing board and they're gonna improve it super samples you can now pick them up at level six i think it's two three four five six or is it three four five was it i think it's three four five six three four five six uh see stratagem can now be used uh while i am storms and the end of mission that's awesome uh what are some other really big ones here Oh, the acid effect. So this was mostly for bile spewers. Bile spewers are doing less damage on average now, and they shouldn't one shot kill you nearly as much. Same with uh, bile titans if you get stuck into the spew. Uh, they've changed it also so that the acid, like the slow component, is not nearly as punishing, so you can actually run away from it. So it's definitely a good change there. Um, yeah, bile spewers are not nearly as annoying, which is nice. Love that uh armored enemy balance uh they want to they reduce the amount of armored enemies that are spawning uh, but they increase the number of weaker enemies to kind of make it more of a horde game and it seems like this has worked out pretty well um i do like how it feels on bug missions in particular because they've added the new behemoth titan or charger sorry and he basically just requires extra shots to take care of uh, so it's like two shots of an AT weapon to the head, two shots of an AT weapon to the leg to break his armor. Uh, we'll talk more about it in the tier list, but for the most part, I love it. It's a really cool change, making like less less armored enemies that are like annoying and you have like four chargers running from every direction, but you have like maybe one or two chargers now uh, to compensate, which is kind of nice. Um, uh, for automatons, uh, they have reduced the amount of Hulk spawns in particular, but that means now that there's maybe more Devastators or Tier 1 bots. From the amount of missions I've been doing on Vernon Wells for Save the Kids, uh, I've been noticing a lot more Tier 1 bots in my missions, uh, and even that's over like a large sample size, so uh, that, that was interesting to see. But um, yeah, interesting to see how this plays out. You know, are they going to keep decreasing armor spawns to try and promote more ad clear strategies being used? okay uh for patrols they've reworked it back to the way it was before they wanted to mess with it so it should feel like you know you get significantly less patrol spawns when you're uh, a solo and then it ramps up as you get uh more players but i think this second part here has been messing with people and it's kind of changing how we do missions you know when you get when you're walking around a mission and you have these large gaps of like no enemies they're trying to fill them in with patrols, it seems like. But that's also making it so if you're not someone who's like playing it mildly stealthy, you're running into a lot more patrols, which I think is making people think that this hasn't been changed at all. I don't know why they did both of these changes at the same time, but I think that's what's happening. On bug missions, I haven't really noticed it all that much or 
because it just seems kind of the way it was before, especially on four player co-op. I haven't played on lower difficulty, so I can't comment on that. But I think that's what people are running into is the second line here where like the empty part of the maps are just trying to be filled with stuff. Um, other than that, I think we've mostly talked about it. They nerfed the Hulk Scorcher again. It shouldn't be one-shotting you nearly a month, mostly just uh, putting you on fire. Uh, they changed the frontal tank armor value. I've heard reports that the auto cannon can now actually pen some parts of the frontal armor. I still need some testing on that, but it's really interesting. Um, they, the hot and cold planets are actually affecting the cooldown of the quasar cannon in particular. For those who didn't know, the quasar cannon was always the set amount of, re, of regen, no matter what kind of planet you're on. So it actually didn't matter. Now it actually does. Uh, the spear has been fixed. Let's go. And it feels great. It is super consistent. But unfortunately, while they were fixing it, uh, automaton uh, spawners, aka uh, fabricators, can't be locked onto. That was not intended and will be fixed in the future. My pessimistic part of my brain is probably not until next month, but my optimistic brain is maybe sometime this month we might get it. Who knows? Uh, for the automatons that were firing or had their weapons like pointed straight down and were somehow shooting at you, they've changed uh, sometimes how like automatons were like facing weird angles and still shooting at you. They've addressed that. Exosuits got a massive rework and buff to their aiming. So now your weapons don't have to be perfectly aimed at a target to shoot at. There's now some leniency. So that means that if you want to shoot below you and the weapon didn't have enough depression to shoot at it, it now can. So there's now a wide range of like uh, aiming that you can do that you couldn't do before. The rocket pods on the original mech kind of sucked for a long time since they fixed you being able to shoot through your own mech because you turn too fast. Now it works where you aim your reticle the rocket will go uh except for like in extreme with so many bugs uh, i definitely expected some and some of these are like oh come on guys can we like make sure that these are not coming in so fingers crossed for the next one that we can reduce the amount of bugs and they can continue addressing the weapons that haven't been touched you know just off the top of my head like where's the liberator penetrator changes where are the just basic ar like ammo buffs um where's the scythe's new like scope i would really love to see that um you know just off the top of my head there's a couple weapons that i just i feel like they need some love and honestly even the liberator uh the incendiary liberator uh i would love to see like a little bit of a nerf on the burn damage in particular it just outclasses every weapon in the game so you know here's hoping in the future that we continue to get awesome patches like this if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please consider dropping a like, checking out the stream. I am live while recording this. Uh, check out the Discord uh, link below and just come by the stream and talk to me about what you thought about the patch. I, I'd love to hear your opinions and uh, you know have a little bit of discourse back and forth. Uh, you can expect uh, tier lists in the coming days. I'm gonna start working on them on stream, formulating my opinions and just testing everything and make sure that I uh, give you guys a, a good tier list. I don't wanna rush them out. And I want to rush them out. Yeah. Much love, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, YouTube.